What's up guys? Welcome to Mango Mansion. And I wanna show you its new features, but before I do, I wanna show you what is going on here. It is October 22nd, 2025, and these guys have been here for about uh, two to three weeks. And just look at this. It's just lots of new growth, guys. I mean, it's, it's not just one or two, it's just, it's everywhere. All these new growth, they are responding. Now, hopefully I can show this right here. The, uh, the temperatures are kept above 60, so it's about six to 10 degrees warmer here at night and in the earliest morning when it gets the coldest. And so we're still hitting like 60, even 64 degrees at nighttime temps. And we're getting as high as 100 degrees over here. And sometimes I would want to get it up to like 105. And they seem to be responding extremely well, guys. And look at this. This one is Sunrise. And it's got, it's, it's getting ready to push getting ready to push you got more growth right there that this one right here is coconut cream you got new growth there that's a carry just pushed this one right here maybe about four or five days ago it was just right it looked exactly like I don't know less than this thing right here and it's just pushed really well and there's quite a bit more in here see look at that new growth on these seedlings right there it's just everywhere guys here is an orange sherbet right there maha there goes maha and here's another oh that is a zil 80 guys right there beautiful push I couldn't get a push like this outside it's it's uh, yeah and it's getting disease outside for the Zill 80 there's a super Alfonso getting ready to push once again in October like late October guys that's the thing now here's the heated greenhouse now I just installed this maybe about ooh, a week week and a half ago I think or maybe just a week but look at this orange sherbet it's ready to push once again here those are my new graphs and you can see here's the rootstock growth still pushing letting us know that there is energy that's being pushed out into these scions and that right there you can see it's bulging out at least the scions are bulging out that is a bolt right there as you can see it's pushing and I'll show you a little bit more here okay this is our new newly grafted rootstock look at this peach cobbler I believe that is a Carla if I remember correctly um, look at this building new bulging uh, uh, what do you call it? buds and it's just everything's growing here guys look at this look at that Carla getting ready to push again there you go we got a push here is an M4 that just pushed that's a Maha that just pushed Ooh, it is hot in here guys there's a Beverly pushing again it's just widespread that's an ST Maui that just pushed and uh, everything here guys it's doing well so let me show you guys what's going on here. So I got this small aquarium pump. It's going outside, okay? Let me show you. So it's still a mess here, guys. I haven't cleaned up. But see that? It goes into this thing that I built. It's a solar collector. So it's like a solar pool heater right there. It's literally just coiled up half inch irrigation tubing 
and uh, let me show you. Hold on. Uh, and uh, then it pushes it back out here. And there is a difference of temperature. So right now it's 76.6, but let me show you what's inside there. All right, so I put that um, temperature sensor right inside. And look at this, it's climbing. And you'll get to like 90 degrees. And this is just climbing. So it'll, it'll climb, especially it's only like 11 o'clock right now in the morning so it's gonna put it's going to to climb up to like 88 90 so it'll heat this up passively kind of passively with just like a 15 watt aquarium pump right there so that's I think that's pretty cool and this acts as a heat sink like all these water containers are acting like heat sinks and there's another Another uh, water tank there. Here's one right here. This is our inoculate. It's like a compost tea station right there. Hooked up to this um, battery operated wand like that. See that? So this is how we quote unquote feed our trees. So I'll talk about that. This is all like regenerative uh, growing in mind or beyond organic is what I call it um, some people don't know what uh, regenerative agriculture means but it's just building up soil microbiology to pretty much do all the work of uh, feeding the plants rather than putting inorganic fertilizers in so look at all of that so here is another aquarium pump I mean sorry a uh, uh, a 265 gallon IBC tote I got a water heater here it's off right now um, I gotta get more I gotta get my electrical here uh, working in order because I just installed the uh, what do you call this the water the water uh, what do you call this the aerator right here for the aquaponics so we're starting aquaponics again guys we grew tilapia a uh, few years back for about three years until our greenhouse blew over and they ended up ended up uh, dying over the winter because I just didn't have time to um, protect them so right here is going to be our tilapia growing area and there's already tilapia in there you can't see them but there's I just put them in like uh, two days ago they're alive I know <laughs> I thought I was kind of scared that they weren't gonna make it, but they're, they're alive. And so, and we have another IBC tote right there. We have this recirculating, oscillating fan um, that is, I believe it's about 60 watts. I have it running on medium. I was running it on low for a while. And so we also have this, oh, that's very important because we don't want disease in here we need airflow because it gets hot fungus love heat and humidity we're trying to keep humidity here above 50 and so far we got it to about a little bit less than 50 during like uh like during the lows of it during the day when it gets really hot but overall it's usually above 50 and can get up to 90 percent during the um during nighttime and so we have this vent right here that opens and closes automatically using a temperature sensor here and uh, it's showing right now that it is uh, 88 degrees and we set it at to open at 95 95 degrees guys I'm probably gonna increase it to 100 degrees so this will open automatically using this actuator and uh, using a um, uh, what do you call this using a, a 12 volt power uh, and uh, hooked up to this relay and it opens it up based on my set temperature so that's pretty cool this one right here I don't recommend this is an automatic opener um, uses uh, you know the power of the heat 
to build I don't think there's a gas here it 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 pushes this piston and it 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 opens this window up but it starts like at 70 or 75 and it just doesn't work for me here because I'm trying to keep this greenhouse uh, within 85 to 100 degrees and preferably I want it like at 95 to 100 here throughout the day and uh, here is our I don't know if I talked about this already this is my compost tea station I got an aeration pump if you know compost tea it's best to keep things aerobic and then like I said I got this um, uh, this garden wand that's what that has like a 25 foot hose and it's able to reach everything in this area and then I built this makeshift grafting greenhouse right here and it's a heated greenhouse and it is being heated with a 750 watt on low setting heater and I'm trying to keep things here above 62 preferably above 65 degrees at all times and that would be the minimum temperature and look at it they are responding responding now there's the, the only difference is sometimes this this area right here would hit like 59 maybe 58 for like maybe an hour and a half so far uh, while temps outside is like at 54 maybe 52 usually dipping to like 49 on occasion and right here is staying above 65 and that's the plan so that we can graft almost all year long except during like deep in the winter when temperatures outside will get like 38 40 sometimes 35 36 and so that right there too so now we hooked up automatic window openers too right here with a separate uh what do you call this with a separate uh with a separate uh, thermostat or uh, you know I don't know if you could see that but uh, it's set at 95 degrees Fahrenheit and it's powering this actuator and that actuator right there and so when a certain temp hits this area because it's two separate there's like it's, I, I found that that area has a different heat or it gets it has different temperature versus here and during the day as it moves the temperature changes as well and so it's nice to have independent independently uh, controlled um, uh, ways to control the temperature throughout this greenhouse and I'll be installing another recirculating fan on the opposite side and yeah so look at that, I'll install another actuator right here, okay, that will open that and perhaps open this one when it gets really unbearable hot here. Then in the, you know, preparation for next summer, I will be installing this in late spring right there. That is a, uh, um, a powered high CS CFM. Um, exhaust fan that I'll probably install right there at the top or maybe somewhere here so that uh, you know during this those times when we will actually hit like 105 degrees outside it will not get above 110 degrees here ideally so we'll open up all the doors during those times and all these windows and you'll have all that heat that builds up here will be um, uh, you know uh, exhausted outside is that a good term so anyways guys that is the mango mansion and I'm gonna show you one last thing that we're doing right here so we're trying to insulate this okay especially the, the south the north facing side so I mean in, insulating this with a radiant film right here so this is like a it's very tear resistant right here guys and uh, I will be posting video, I mean, I'll be posting the links to this along with this 50% shade cloth. So 50% shade cloth is necessary, okay? It's mandatory for this type of 
uh, greenhouse. Otherwise, your plants, your seedling trees, your grafts, you're gonna die. You need the shade, okay? Shade, heat, humidity, airflow. That's what we're doing here, combination with heat sinks to buffer the temperatures. And that is Mango Mansion, guys, and it is almost full. We still got like maybe 10, 15 trees that we need to move in here. And as you can see, we're also stacking our trees because we don't have space. I need to build shelves, but I don't have time. And besides, it's really hard to get back there now. I'm gonna have to do that next year. And look, you could see uh, we're stacking them, but allowing still for airflow in between. So we're not like stacking them like um, in, what do you call that, series or whatever, continuously. So we're leaving, uh, uh, leaving that open right there so it's kind of staggered when it comes to you know the the placement of uh, these guys on top of each other so that's it guys hope you learned something from this i surely learned something from all of this this is a everything that you're seeing here is a combination of everything i've learned in the past seven years doing green uh, you know putting up greenhouses all the mistakes i made and the people that i collaborated with the people that showed me their mistakes and um you know the observations all throughout the years and from the growers that have contributed to everything that is shown here thank you for those of you who have and uh hopefully this will become a huge success and if it does I mean I'm gonna be leaving quite a bit of trees in here to fruit and also to get them huge before we get them out into the back and into the ground I'm excited I'm excited because California is going to become mango capital second to Florida Florida, right. maybe Arizona too. Okay, second, so maybe a third, okay? Third, because Arizona is just something else. They get the heat and all that stuff. But this is game changer, guys. Game changer. Till next time.